wizards welcome back now today i got a fun one that i've been wanting to test for a while now and it actually started with the rumor that i heard and to be honest with you i just finished all the testing and i was outside and it started raining so i had to move everything out here to our like high school recording studio it's fine it's fine it's great now i gotta preface this rumor because it, it starts it starts with reddit where all dumb things happen and if you've ever been there you see this hyper fixation on NIR compliance, where they basically say like, yeah, you need to pay all the extra money because that, that NIR compliance is what it's all about. You need to pay f five times as much for pants. After doing a ton of night vision classes and just testing, you know, just endless night vision products and illuminators, I'm about 100% convinced those are just marketing people who have bought accounts from real people. Like I'm, I'm fairly convinced that's what's going on. Real people aren't number one, that's stupid. And number two, talk in such a nuanced, like hyper fixated way about a product. That's usually a dead giveaway that uh, that's probably somebody who works at the company. And thankfully, Dirty Civilian also did a nice long and fantastic video where they tested a huge range of fabrics to see how they performed under night vision. And they had the same result that I've come across. If you're within five feet, like where those clothes may be more illuminated, having, having bright clothes are gonna be the least of your problems. And then when you're far away, the difference in brightness is almost so inconsequential that it, it doesn't matter at all anyway. So yes, this is, I know I'm testing something in this video, but it, it makes for a brain dead conversation when you talk about NIR compliance where it doesn't really matter up close, and it also doesn't really matter at distance, but, but it's really, really super important to the marketing people who are, are trying to sell that it's important. And in some conversations where I've been making fun of this, some of my partners have actually brought up that it also doesn't matter because in a lot of SF communities and just some other guys who, who just have to use what they have, they've actually just been dusting some of their gear with ultra flat spray paint to get whatever gear they need to have into a compliant spectrum in the night vision world. So while the whole concept is widely oversold and it's important, I wanted to test if we could add NIR compliance or resistance to a cheap gl glowy product for only seven or eight warm bats. YouTube still doesn't let us say dollars because of, I don't know, free speech or something. I've lost track nowadays. Now though, I, I use two different words there. One you're probably very familiar with and one that may sound new with NIR resistance and NIR compliance. You've probably heard of compliance before. This may be your first time hearing resistance. So let me break down what those things are to kind of walk us through the test and understand what, what we're actually testing for as an end result. Materials that are not treated for NIR will generally have a brighter hue as the materials and dyes are reflecting the light back differently than the surroundings. This makes a product stand out as a bright white patch against a dark background. But it's not glowing per se. It's just reflecting the light differently in such a way to make it stand out. It's the contrast that you're seeing, not glowing, it's weird. Most civilian gear isn't treated either. So if you have like a really cool tent or like a cool camping, like old backpack thing that you're gonna use it for end of the world, uh, it's probably gonna give you away because it's not gonna have any of the protection. If you were to look at that, like in a patch of trees or something, it would the shape would just stand right out in the woods. I mean, unless this works and you can, you can just spray paint stuff, in that case, it probably work great. Now, NIR compliance, when you probably know, means the materials and dyes are manufactured in a way to absorb and reflect light in a way that blends with the environment's light wavelength. So NIR compliant gear still reflects light, but in such a way that it matches trees and plants and stuff, so it doesn't contrast against the surroundings. So if you're in an open field, you know, you're just standing there out in the open in night vision, are you gonna blend in it, you know, and be totally invisible? No, it's gonna be very easy to see you. It, it's just the contrast that's helping you blend in. You'd be obviously standing there just clear as day, even with NIR compliant gear, because there's nothing for that compliant color and wavelength to blend into. It's just be your silly little silhouette. Now, NIR compliance is generally done in the manufacturing process. It can be done like in the fabrics themselves, 
or it can be a treatment that's kind of added to the product after the sewing process so it has like one uniform layer on everything. Here you can see that with the Shaw Arc V2 that has two different contrasting bits, with the outer fabric being the NIR compliant Cordura Multicam, but the inner padding being some random whatever the heck they're using here. I would have thought they would have done some treatment post sewing, but hey, it's only a 800 mountain carrier, so, so why in the world would I think that? I'm sure the spit and raisins one is, Sure, 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 sure. But that's NAR compliance where it's baked in in some sort of process at the beginning and it has that light wavelength that matches the environment. Now there's one more I mentioned that's a little bit different yet kind of similar with NIR resistance and you're starting to hear this more and more in terms of like marketing terms. So let me explain this one too. NIR resistance means there's some sort of coding or treatment done far after the fact to reduce the contrast, but not to a degree where it matches the environment exactly. So a product that is NIR resistant could be a little bit too dark, you know, kind of show up as like a black spot compared to everything else around it, or just a couple shades too light. So it still shows up, but maybe, maybe not as much as being completely untreated. Now, is that better than no treatment at all? I know it's, it's questionable, but I would say most likely yes. NIR resistance is also something that can kind of wear off over time since it wasn't actually baked in in the manufacturing process like you see in NIR compliance stuff. So think NIR resistance is something that's added in later and it's doing something, just exactly what it's doing is a, is a little bit more random because it's not to any sort of specification at all. But that's the difference as NIR compliance is also, you know, it follows that very specific mil spec in terms of its wavelengths. Now though, you kind of understand that I'm gonna be treating some products <laughs> with some spray paint. So we're gonna be very squarely in that NIR resistance realm and not necessarily the compliance, but kind of what I wanna see in this testing, like. What, what it actually does, if it does anything at all, and is it so close that it doesn't matter? That's what I wanna find out. Now, I started this test by finding a few pieces of gear that are obviously not treated or compliant in any way. This RELV Moab pattern chest rig does horribly under IR, so I don't know what he's doing wrong, but it'll work great for this test. I also have this UF Pro Combat shirt that also reflects light in a way that tells me the price tag on this is unjustified, very much like the pants they make. So it's another great, perfect option. And then we have some random Costco jogging pants that are the same horrible IR contrast as these two bits of uh, premium gear. Sure, 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 okay. Now I think I understand what the spray paint is doing by adding that ultra flat layer so the light reflects a little bit differently. So I wanna test it, but the first thing I do is go out at night and let's get our baseline so we can see what happens when we coat everything and if it does anything. Testing up close at night, we have the ideal Reddit photo distance of two feet for some stupid reason. Here you can see what I was saying with the RELV pattern first on the chest rig. It goes from a kinda noticeable pattern to reflecting all of the light I send at it. Definitely not blending in like the other two carriers with our Agilite K0 and the Dynamic Principles DPC. The UF Pro shirt does much the same where the fabric treatment is way off and makes for a wildly different contrast than the wavelengths of the other two Beyond System shirts. And then we have our four cat mouth sweatpants that perform exactly the same, but I want you to see it compared against how it should perform so we can see if we make any improvements. Next, I move them all back and this is why I hate this as the argument is kind of stupid. This is at 25 yards. This is CQB distance. If we took this photo from my zero distance of 50 yards, my nods would just show some random blobs out here. The test is already stupid because the parameters are stupid, but let's, let's do it anyway and see what results we get at this distance, even though someone would definitely hear you even if they couldn't see you. It's, it's fine. Here, even at 25 yards, the contrasting effect isn't quite as obvious, but when draped over my fence, I'm able to amplify the effect. The pants definitely stand out when you add IR, and if you were straddling my fence, 
I, I'd probably not need IR to see you and hear you, but you know, whatever. The UF Pro shirt was much the same. The effect was less apparent than when up close, but from a contrast standpoint, you could tell there was something there while the other shirts blended in way better. For the carriers, I couldn't get them to stay on my fence, so I went long ways in the yard, but it's relatively the same distance. And here, the effect is again there. The Ralph pattern seems to stand out, but hilariously, the contrast of the mags on the front of the carrier are a far, far bigger problem, as you have deep black odd squares on your chest that don't really occur in nature. Now, one thing we initially noticed is even those items that were glowing, that amount of IR light that's reflecting off of it reduces as we go out in distance. At 100 yards, I couldn't tell one pair of pants from the other. So it, a lot of this is, I'm telling you, it's just a lot of marketing crap. But let's test it and find out. We're gonna go out and we're gonna spray paint these, see what kind of difference it makes when we do that. And we can make some Reddit neckbeards mad when I'm, when I'm wearing my IO gear pants from Amazon. All right, so we're gonna test two different options, a tan one from Krylon and a brown tone one from Rust-Oleum, both with that ultra flat finish so it won't reflect the light. Now, I asked how you do this and I was told you can just dust the products. You don't have to spray it directly, even though I think it would be more effective, but by dusting it, we can keep the colors and patterns of the original products intact. So then we have our same visual pattern breakup and some IR resistance. Now, right off the bat, I'll tell you that the tan doesn't work as well as the brown. Like the tan definitely looks like this whole thing's just covered in dirt. Whereas the earth side, it looks pretty much exactly the same as when we started. So in terms of color shift, I like the way the earth toned it, but <laughs> that's not what we're testing today. I'm gonna remember this because people always give me grief. Like, oh, your gear looks too clean. I'll just dust it with this. This tan one makes it all look dirty and gross. Now I did, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. I did let it dry and then applied another coat. So now that everything is ready to go, let's test it. Now that it's nighttime, we take a look at the newly treated gear up close. I have to say I'm surprised. The Relv Moa pattern has a far better contrast when the IR light is applied and even more so on the earth side. The tan side seems like it helped, but it's still not the right wavelength. And actually the earth side still looks a little bit too dark too. Maybe two coats was too much. Testing our UF Pro shirt, we again see the same. A fairly stark improvement on the right side with the earth tone and an improvement, but definitely not as impressive on the tan side. For the pants, I think we saw the same thing where there was definitely an improvement. Tan side was uh, pretty weak though. Testing them at our insane 25 yard distance, our newly IR resistant treated gear did far better. While it wasn't perfect, the Relv pattern now blended in far more than before and is definitely comparable to the other carriers, even with the mags being a much, much bigger problem. On the UF Pro top, the IR reflection is far closer to matching the plants and the surroundings, particularly on the right side, to a degree where the difference between all the shirts is far lower. Again, we see the same thing with the pants where the ultra flat spray paint definitely help to match the wavelength of the surroundings and cut the contrast so they no longer stood out quite as clearly against the environment. So yeah, I think it worked. I mean, I think it worked pretty well. I think there would have to be a little bit of like testing to find the perfect color tone to match the environment and also play around a little bit with just how many coats work perfectly. I think, I think on the chest rig, I put a little bit too much, the color shifted a little bit and it's like, <laughs> way too dark on one side. Now, do I think it matters at all? I don't know, but I am thinking it would be pretty smart if you took your entire gear, like had it all set up with mags and comms and all the different pieces you used and just gave it a light dusting to give it one uniform look. Doing even that on the Shaw Arc V2, I bet I could get the different fabrics and materials like the cottons and the plastics and the laminates to all have the same contrast so none of the small bits you see here would stand out anymore. So I did also test this on a P-Mag and the difference was, well, it was negligible. The treated mag just seemed to reflect a lot less light and be a lot less glossy once I dusted it. Dusting this <laughs> 29 round P-Mag, 
Uh, it made it a little bit more grippy. I was kind of surprised by this and it gave it a very, very slight earth tone. So I really did like this and I probably will do this on more of the mags, even if the actual result from the IR testing was, well, it really wasn't anything at all. It wasn't anything to write home about. But that's all of our tests. So let's answer the question. Can you add NIR resistance to any product, regardless of price, with just some seven napkin spray paint? Got it. It's so stupid you can't say prices like, oh, let's just sound like I'm having a stroke. That's just way better. Whatever. The answer is yes, asterisk though. It seems more earth tone colors are gonna get you closer to the compliant wavelength you want. By dusting our gear, we were able to significantly reduce the contrast of our untreated gear under IR, which definitely reduced how much it stood out against the environment. Now, is our result perfect? No, but it is super close. And from what I've learned today, I think I have enough knowledge to kind of understand what tones to use, how many coats to use to get it really, really close to NIR compliant items. So there you go. You can just buy the super cheap stuff off Amazon or wherever you find it and just dust it with seven Batman spray paint and it'll likely be close enough. Now looking over at long term, would something like spray paint need to be reapplied over time? Yes. And that is one caveat to NIR compliance stuff where all of that wavelength and that matching, all that stuff is going to be baked in when the product is originally made and would never need to be reapplied. But is having it baked in so important that it's worth paying like five times the price, like $400 for pants? No, that's stupid. And like I said, when we take these items out to an insane distance of 75 yards, you instantly see how dumb this entire conversation is. But hey, now you know, and, and I know now too, that you can just spray paint stuff to fix cheap gear. I, I didn't think you could do that. I'll be honest though, the main thing, like the most important takeaway I got from this is that you can dust PMAGs to make them even better. That's, that, that's the main thing I learned from this whole video. So super, super valuable knowledge. But I hope this video on asking if you can make something NIR compliant or resistant by adding in some basic spray paint was useful in your purchasing decisions. I wanna say thanks to all of our YouTube members and our Patreon supporters. You make it possible we can test things like this and come back and show you the results and then also <laughs> maybe give away that garbage gear that's not spray painted in two different tones. You guys can definitely win that, I don't mind at all. And I wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what you think about this test, how you think you could improve it, and is it actually worth it to get the cheap gear and spray paint it or is the really expensive stuff the way to go? I wanna hear from you guys, hear what you guys think. All right, take care, wash out. For those of you who look to do this yourself, just know uh, two coats of earth may be too much. This was a one of a kind, like I think this is the only one that exists. <laughs> it's definitely one of a kind now, but uh, yeah, I thought this test was fun but I didn't get very many bloopers. So, all right, <laughs> bye guys.